Uh, welcome to uh, the Graduate Institute in Geneva. Uh, Professor Riesbrot, you have just joined us as the uh, Ultramar uh, Professor of Religion and Politics and we are very, very happy to have you with us here. You are also a member of the Anthropology and Sociology Department. And let me start by just asking you what motivated you to move um, after a long career at the University of Chicago to Geneva. Oh, thanks for the welcome first. Uh, there are always at least three things you look for. One, you look at the institution. If you have the imp impression that it is well run, that you can rely on the structures in which you have to move afterwards. The second aspect is if you like your potential colleagues and the students, because living in academia also is a personal right. interaction and therefore uh, you better don't go to a place where you think you don't get along or they, the, your colleagues don't get along with you. The most interesting part was that actually the topic of religion and politics, which also includes international politics, was not necessarily a topic I have worked on uh, in my earlier career. So what I found most interesting was that there's a new challenge and that I can discover a new field for my own research, teaching, uh, which I find immensely important, but has, has been understudied as least, at least as I'm personally concerned. Could you uh, say something about the course that you are teaching uh, this term and the international conference uh, that you are uh, planning? Because of course you have held a very distinguished chair of sociology of religion at the sociology department uh, of the University of Chicago and also at Divinity School. Um, but of course, as you say, you are uh, retailoring some of your interests in religion to fit the institutional landscape here. Yeah. The course I'm teaching is a course which mixes several aspects of the study of religion. On the one hand, it go, it's, it's, it's called religious transformation in theory and history, so there's a theoretical part uh, where I try to familiarize people with theories of religion. Uh, but since theories of religion have been for a long time actually theories of the disappearance of religion, <laughs> Very so I, I teach uh, also sec secularization theories, but of course they are somewhat outdated or at least they have be to be more refined in order to, to make, them, make use of them in the modern world. So it is a kind of mix between theories of religion, of secularization, a critique of the concept of religion, refinement of the concept of religion, as well as refinement and critique of the concept of secularization. And the conference which you are planning for uh, this autumn? The conference will be on blasphemy. So I thought I would like the conferences I'm supposed to organize to connect to public debates. I don't want them to be purely academic in the sense that the topics are ac purely academic topics. Of course, the standards by which we treat those topics will be academic standards. But I want to connect to interested people outside of academia with those topics. And so it will be also again a combination of uh, blasphemy cases in international politics. There's a whole long debate in the United Nations. There are obviously dramatic blasphemy cases, some in Islam, for example, the murder of Theo van Gogh in the Netherlands, the cartoons, uh, in, in Denmark with their international repercussions, but of course also uh, there are blasphemy cases in Protestantism. Uh, the Life of Brian by Monty Python was a famous case where usually evangelical Protestants got very excited about. We had blasphemy cases in Poland regarding the uh, heavy metal band Behemoth. Pussy Riot is a blasphemy case where the Orthodox Church is involved. So it will be widespread in topics, and, but I hope that conceptually and intellectually we, we find common ground in order to shed light on, on each of those cases. 
May I take you back to the point on the disappearance of religion, which modernization theory predicted and wrongly so. Yeah. What we are looking at is a re-enchantment in a sense of the world. Could you say something about what you think are the causes which are motivating this reappearance of religion, not only as a, a spirituality, but in the public sphere of um, liberal democracies in the West as much as in the rest of the world? Well, first of all, I think religion never disappeared to the degree people assumed or since they assumed that religion would disappear, they simply ignored it, although it has been there all the time. Of course, the public visibility has increased dramatically. So it's not necessarily that the religion has increased, but the visibility of religion has increased. And I think it is, there are many causes and I'm not sure that uh, the cause for the re-emergence in the public sphere in each country has the same cause. Mm. So it could be that there's always national, regional and other causes involved as well. So to find one explanation for all uh, forms in which religion mm. reappears, uh, I would be cautious at least to assume it. But of course there are uh, one of the factors, certainly globalization is a factor in the sense that the competence of the nation state to provide for issues of social justice, of social recognition have diminished. Uh, and that sort of religion now becomes a means through which one can organize on a local level but also transnationally. So there are new forms of solidarity when old forms of solidarity have failed. New forms tend to emerge. And I think religion is one of those principles on which organization of human beings can happen and which is, gives them an identity, a sense of respect uh, and power networks. So I think that might be one of the, the reasons behind some of, of the reappearances of religion in the public mm -hmm. sphere. I like the point you make about the uh, need to look at a plurality of causes in uh, a variety of contexts. If we take that idea and apply it to secularism, would we need to then pluralize our idea of secularism into secularisms as well? Oh, certainly. I mean, even if you look only at European countries, what's meant by secularism is always something quite different. Secularism or laicite in France is quite different from secularism as it is practiced and, and, and legally defined in Germany. In Germany you have basically contracts between the state and the two big churches, the Lutheran Church and the Catholic Church. Uh, in France the state has become the new church and mar marginalizes the others. Uh, in Scandinavian countries you still have state churches. Mm -hmm. So what, what secularism really means has to be explored in detail and there are, I think there's a continuum from let's say laicite to theoc theocracies and on that continuum most states can be placed somewhere. And finally, uh, if uh, we are pluralizing many of these tendencies which have usually been seen in a rather homogeneous fashion, if we think of the other concept which uh, has been doing a lot of, I think, rather poor analytical work and that is fundamentalism, uh, can you say yeah. something about uh, the notion of competing fundamentalisms in the world today? Well, there are sort of competing religious fundamentalisms, of course, and then there is a kind of sometimes fundamentalist secularism competing with religious fundamentalisms. So we find competing religious fundamentalisms, for example, if a pastor in Florida burns a Quran, which he probably has never read, uh, to the extent he is literate anyway, uh, and the provocation of fundamentalisms, of religious fundamentalisms on each side. But then there are also the secular fundamentalists who want to provoke reactions from religious fundamentalists who usually deliver. <laughs> so it is this kind of, 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 of status game that 
who is on top in a given society or internationally. So it, it is a struggle for respect, for superiority, for symbolic superiority. Uh, also for material resources? At times, but, but often it's, it's subordinate to, because the costs for be, becoming provocative or violent are sometimes higher than the benefits in material terms. But the prestige which might come from it uh, is, is sort of the, what the return they are, are, are looking for, I think.